Hi guys, we are getting started with our Force in Motion unit. This is the first lesson in our new unit. I think you're gonna love this unit. There's lots of fun labs and activities. It's one of my favorites, so I'm excited to get started. So today's lesson is over speed. Um, and we're gonna just kind of move through this fairly quickly because I think you're gonna pick up on it pretty fast. Um, and before we can start talking about our motion words, like speed, velocity, acceleration, etc., cetera, um, we need to talk about motion in general. So we start this unit with, our, this unit is our force and motion unit. So we start this unit with motion. We talk about what motion means and some words associated with it. And then we're going to move into forces. So how do we know if something has moved? That's like the overall question that you need to be able to answer. Um, and I think we take that for granted. We look at a bicycle, somebody pedaling a bicycle, and we say, oh, yeah, they're in motion. But if you really stop and ask, why is it that we know that they're in motion? Um, it's a little bit harder to come up with a definition for that or an explanation for that. So um, here's an example here. If I tell you that this car, this red car, traveled from point A to point B in 10 seconds, and then I ask you, well, how do you know the car moved? You might tell me that you know this because, of course, the, the car changed its position. And that's exactly how you know if an object moves. So an object is in motion if its position is changing. Now, this can be tricky because we have to measure this relative to another object. So a place or another object that can be used sort of as a comparative position. For example, the picture of the horse on the beach, this is a still shot that if we were here live and we were snapping a photo every second that the horse was moving and then we were to develop those photographs, we would notice that in every photograph the background looks a little different. So the horse is the object and then we're comparing the horse's motion to its background. Um, and we have a name for the background. We call this the reference frame. Sometimes this is known as the reference point. But the reference frame is just the background that helps us compare an object's motion. Now, some of my athletes may recognize this guy. And if you do, and I ask you, what is something you can say about his motion? Um, you're probably thinking, he is fast. Um, which is that exactly what speed is. It's how fast an object moves. And this guy, he can move super fast. So his name is Usain Bolt. He currently holds many, many, many national world records. Um, he, in the 2008 Olympics, um, he set some records. And then 2012, he also set some records. Um, and so his biggest competitive, competitor from the United States is Tyson Gay. And then the last Olympics, they thought Tyson Gay was going to just blow it away in the 100 meter dash and Usain Bolt um, actually proved everybody wrong. Um, in that particular 100 meter dash, Usain Bolt covered, um, had a speed of about 8.3 meters per second. And if you stop and think about that, that is just amazing. So if you think about how how long a meter stick is. Um, Usain Bolt, every second, can travel over eight meter sticks. And that's just crazy fast. So um, definitely Usain Bolt is super fast. And what we can do is we can compare the speed of one object to another object. So if I'm talking about um, the last Olympics where Usain Bolt beat his competitor Tyson Gay, who was like the favored runner, we could say um, Usain Bolt is faster than his competitors or Usain Bolt is faster than Tyson Gay. So we can explain an object's speed by comparing it to another object, um, such as in this example, um, because speed is how fast an object moves. So we can describe sort of a qualitative measure for speed where we compare two objects or we can find a more quantitative uh, measurement for speed, which is something that you're going to be doing towards the end of this lesson. Now, if I want to measure speed quantitatively, I'm going to have to have a couple things. First of all, I need to know the distance that the object traveled and then the time that it took for that object to travel that distance. Um, we're going to get a formula in just a second, and I just want to pause right here because 
when we start working out these speed, velocity, acceleration word problems, you're going to see the word distance and you're going to see the word displacement in some of the problems. Now, um, distance in physics is what we call a scalar quantity um, that refers to just how much ground the object covers during its motion. Now, the word displacement is oftentimes mistaken to mean the exact same thing as distance, and that's just not true. So when you displace something, you do move it, um, and it does cover a certain distance, but displacement oftentimes includes um, like a directionality. So while distance is a scalar quantity, displacement is what we call in physics a vector quantity. So it actually refers to how far out of place an object is or basically like an overall position change. However, even though their definitions are different and we're going to see them used differently in our word problems, uh, you're going to actually apply them to the formula in the same way. And this will become more clear when we get to velocity because we'll see the word displacement more in our velocity problems than we will our speed problems. All right, so once I know the distance that an object travels and the time that it takes that object to travel that distance, I can plug it into our formula. So be sure that you write this down because we're going to see this a lot. This is one of many formulas that we're going to get in our force and motion unit. Um, so speed equals distance divided by time. So S equals D over T is what we say for short. And you'll need to know that the SI unit, which remember is just the basic unit um, for speed is meters per second. Now, even though that's the SI unit, we're going to use speed in different ways. So we're going to see speed expressed sometimes differently. Sometimes it'll be miles per hour. Sometimes it'll be kilometers per hour. All right, let's check out this car. Um, so its tire is starting on like the 20 uh, meter mark. And we're at zero seconds. So if I were to ask you, is this car in motion? You might would tell me no. Its position hasn't changed. Time is zero. Position is zero. So if we were to graph this, we would know the car is not in motion. However, once the car starts moving and time starts passing, um, then I have an object in motion. And I can, if I know its distance, I can divide that by time and get how fast the car's moving. So um, if the car moved from the 20 meter mark to the negative 10 meter mark, and it did this in 15 seconds, and I ask you to find speed, you can use that speed formula. So we would have to take distance, which here is going to be about 30 meters. We want to divide that by the time that it took the car to travel the 30 meters, which is 15. And so 30 divided by 15, of course, would be 2. So this car is traveling at an average speed of about 2 meters per second. Now, we do use speed a lot in everyday life. So speed is something that very much so resonates with some of our daily activities. Um, and you need to know sort of... Um, speed, when we talk about speed, sometimes we're referring to what's called constant speed, but most of the times objects don't move with a constant speed. So if you think about a car, your cruise control, cruise control is designed to make your vehicle go at a constant speed. Um, so when an object covers equal distances in equal amounts of time, we say that it's moving at a constant speed. And we're gonna, this is gonna become more clear when we get to our lesson three, which is gonna include graphing motion. So we'll be able to look at a line graph and determine points where speed was constant. We know though, if you think about an, an example of being in a car, from the time you leave your house to the time you get to school, uh, you don't move at a constant speed. Sometimes you speed up, sometimes you slow down, sometimes you even stop. Um, so we could, if we're trying to measure the speed with which we move and objects move in everyday life, we usually do something like an average speed. All right, so this is a distance time graph, which of course we're going to dig into a little bit more in a future lesson. Um, but I just want to show this to you real quick and just kind of go over what it looks like if you cover equal distances and equal amounts of time. You have that nice, pretty, positive slope. Now moving back to our 
word problems. We're going to be working out lots of word problems, um, and they're not hard. Uh, if you know your formula, these speed problems are going to be super easy. So suppose a wheelchair racer finishes a 132-meter race in 18 seconds. If I want to know the racer's speed, I'm going to write my formula in. Then I'm going to plug in what I know. So I'm going to go back to my word problem and pull out the distance. Remember, distance is going to be measured in meters, kilometers, centimeters. Um, and then my time, which is going to be measured in seconds or hours or minutes. And then I'm going to plug that in. I'm going to divide 132 divided by 18. And then here's something I want you to try to remember with our word problems. I want you to try to remember to round to the nearest 100th. So that's always two numbers after the decimal. So in our example here, um, the wheelchair racer travels an average speed of 7.33, and then I need to remember to put my unit, which here is going to be meters per second. Now, I love what, what I call the pie chart trick. So the pie chart is going to work with all of the formulas that we do in physical science. No matter what formula it is, it can be plugged into this pie chart, and you can solve for any variable. So we have a formula for speed, right? Distance divided by time. But what if I were to give you speed and give you time and ask for distance? Or what if I were to give you speed and distance and ask for time? You would have to manipulate that formula. So while I have full confidence that you can do that because you're taught that in math class, if you want to use just an easy trick, this pie chart trick works every time. So what you have to remember is um, this line, this horizontal line, is the division line. So anything that crosses this line, you're going to divide. And then this vertical line is our multiplication line. And anything that crosses this line, you'll multiply. So basically what we do is we take our word problem, we plug in what we know, and we leave a variable for what we don't know, and then we can solve through the pie chart. So look at this example. Jack's toy car travels 1.3 meters over the course of 12 seconds. And if I want to know the average speed of Jack's car, since I'm looking for speed, I'm going to leave my S here. Um, and then I know at the top distance is going to go here. So I'm going to pull out that distance of 12, um, excuse me, of 1.3 meters. And then I'm going to plug in my time, which they told me was 12 seconds. And since 1.3 is on top of 12 seconds, that means we have to divide the two. And when you do that, you get speed equals 0.11 meters per second. All right, let's look at this second problem because in this one, we're solving for a different variable. So in problem two, Lisa visits her uncle. Her uncle lives 45 miles away. She drives an average speed of 55 miles per hour. So if I want to know how long it takes Lisa to reach her uncle's house, I'm just going to plug in what I know. So this time I'm looking for how long it's going to take Lisa. So that's a time measurement. I plug in my variable there and then I'm going to plug in the distance, which they gave me in the problem was 45 miles. And then they told me that Lisa travels 55 miles per hour. So I plug that in for speed. Now in my pie chart, 45 is on top of 55. So that means I have to divide 45 divided by 55. And I get a time of 0.82 hours. Now, remember when you divide like this, miles is going to cancel. And so I'm going to be left with hours for my time, which makes sense. All right, I want you to pause the video, and I want you to work out this problem and see if you get the right answer. So Carlos has a derby car that can travel 1.2 meters per second. So that's the speed, meters per second. So I'm going to plug that in for speed. I want to know how much distance his car can cover in 12 seconds. So I've plugged in my time, I've plugged in my speed, and I'm looking for distance. Now this time, I'm going to have to cross this vertical line, so that means multiply. So I'll have to multiply these two numbers to get my answer. Watch what happens here. Seconds is going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with meters, which makes sense for a distance. Um, solution. 
All right, so my total distance is going to be 14.4 meters. All right, so that's the end of our speed lesson. Our next lesson is going to cover velocity.